The key to phylogenetics is looking for evidence of shared derived characters for uh, evidence of recent common ancestry. So let's talk about the different types of traits and how to discover them. Now we have three different big words to learn, simplesiomorphy, synapomorphy, and atopomorphy. Again, it is really helpful to take the time to learn how to pronounce these words because things will make more sense and you are more likely to remember what you read if you can say it in your head. So one more time, simplesiomorphy, synapomorphy, and atopomorphy. What we're talking about here is once we have an idea of the pattern of how species are related, we can start to put interesting things on the tree. Here, we've mapped on different important um, uh, adaptations and when they happen. So hair, both primates and rodents have hair. So that is a synapomorphy or a shared derived trait of all mammals. Eggs with shells that happened before birds and crocodiles separated. So that's why we put it on that branch of the tree. And this is just a nice way to understand how old different traits are and when evolution happened. So an amniotic egg, we have that. It's just, you know, inside our placenta that happened before we actually separated from birds, the ancestors of birds and crocodiles. Four limbs go back even farther, uh, as does a bony skeleton as and a vertebrae. You might want to go back and rewatch some of the uh, lectures about the evolution of kingdom animalia to remind yourself about these traits. Um, what's interesting here is we both use these traits as evidence to discover these phylogenies, but once we have these phylogenetic trees, we can map interesting things on them. So let's use a primate example. We have a pretty good idea of how primates are related today, so we can start to map different traits on this tree. So if we look at who has a tail, almost everybody here has a tail except for the apes. We don't have tails, and neither do our other ape friends, such as chimpanzees, gorillas, or orangutans. So we can assume, because everybody has a tail except for apes, that the ancestral primate probably had a tail, because everybody else did. So that means if we want to map this onto the tree, we can put right here just on the ape branch that we lost our tail. That is the simplest or most parsimonious way to explain this tree here. Um, this is an example of a symplasiomorphy. This means a shared ancestral trait. It is present in more than one taxa, and it's relatively old, and it's probably present in the ancestor of the tree that you're looking at. So another example is all of these creatures here, our bony fish, our dog, and our dinosaur, all have bones, so this is a symplasiomorphic character. But not everything is a symplasiomorphy. We can also have synapomorphies. These are shared derived traits. So again, they are present in more than one taxa, but they are relatively recent. Notice we have the same syn or sim, uh, and the n or the m, that just depends on what the letter that follows it, um, but syn or sim mean together. Uh, apo means new and morph means for, so a shared new form or morphology. So we can go back to these three organisms here, and now we notice that both our dog and our dinosaur have four limbs. So this is a synapomorphy. Again, these are both tetrapods, which our fish here is not. The last type of trait we can have is an autopomorphy. Auto means self, so auto, um, and then apo is new, morph is form, so a, uh, a self new form. Um, so this is a trait that is found in only one species. You might also call it unique. So of course I use a tarsier example. One of the reasons tarsiers are special is they have two grooming claws. No other primate has that. Um, so let's go back to our primate tree here and we can map several different traits on this tree. So we have a tooth comb and our lemurs and lorises. Tarsiers have extreme orbital hypertrophy. Um, all of our anthropoids have color, or most of our anthropoids have color vision, and we have an opposable thumb. So can you tell what types of traits are each of these? Synapomorphies, atopomorphies, simplesiomorphies? Take a moment and see if you can figure it out for yourself. Our tooth comb here, that is a synapomorphy between lemurs and lorises, um, because it is shared between two different groups here. Extreme orbital hypertrophy, that is an atopomorphy of tarsiers because they are the only ones that have it. Color vision in anthropoids, that is a synapomorphy because again, it is shared. 
Uh, remember, I am oversimplifying um, color vision and anthropoids, but let's just go with it for now. Um, our opposable thumb, you notice that's all the way at the base of the tree because all primates have this opposable thumb, and that is a symplesiomorphy. It is a shared ancestral trait. Um, a good cheat is if a, tr a character appears at the base or the root of your tree, that is a symplesiomorphy. Um, one thing to point out, though, to make things even more complicated is whether something is a synapomorphy or a symplesiomorphy is relative. So here we are looking at this tree and, you know, looking at primates and all primates have this opposable thumb. So for primates, that is a symplesiomorphy. But if we were to compare primates to a different group, um, even just a different group of mammals comparing primates to cats, well, cats don't have an opposable thumb. So in that instance, now our opposable thumb becomes a synapomorphy. So these are relative terms, um, and you need to pay attention to the level of comparison you are making. Um, but let's remind ourselves of some important terms, um, namely homology. Um, a homologous character is similar because it is shared due to um, similar or recent ancestry. Both synapomorphies and symplesiomorphies are types of homologies, just, you know, relatively old or relatively new. So again, this classic example, um, the same bones in our forelimbs across all tetrapods, those are symplesiomorphies or synapomorphies, depending on your level of comparison. In contrast, now we have a homoplasy. So these are traits that do not reflect evolutionary history. And, you know, they these are similar traits that are present in more than one species, but they're in very different parts of the tree. And it indicates that these traits evolved independently. So the same trait evolved multiple times. Um, one of my favorite examples is to look at homeothermy or things that can generate their own internal body heat. We find this in both mammals and birds, but you notice the common ancestor is pretty far away and this trait probably did not originate in that common ancestor, so it is a homoplastic trait. Um, homoplastic traits can be super interesting, but they are not useful for phylogenetics at all and they actually confuse our attempts to try and figure out how different species are related. Um, so they are useful for functional purposes and asking the question, why did this trait evolve? You would then want to look for similarities in the environment between mammals and birds, and that would give you um, a clue as to why it is advantageous to be homeothermic. But this, of course, leads to the question of, how do I know which is which? And in the beginning, you, you don't. You have to do um, further um, analysis and look at many different traits to figure out what's going on. In general, Symplesiomorphic traits are relatively common. You should expect to find them in many different places. Um, synapomorphic traits should be relatively less common because remember, they're new. And you should expect um, to find synapomorphies in species that are just overall very similar. Um, the key here is when you're trying to figure out what's going on, you're going to have to look at a lot of different traits. And you want to figure out what are the common patterns. Do most traits suggest that these two species are closely related and like only a few suggest alternate relationships? Then those traits, then the few traits that are suggesting something else, those are probably homoplasies and everything else is probably a homology. So can you explain? What are the different ways we can classify traits? <music>